Welcome back to the third part of lecture six. Where we left off was an example showing that there seemed to be a connection between the homogeneous solutions to homogeneous systems of linear equations and solutions to non-homogeneous systems of linear equations. So what we want to look at is, well, how are these two solution sets related? The following theorem captures some of this information or captures this uh, correspondence. And what it says is the following. Let's say that I have a, ve a vector P, which is a solution. You may not be able to find all, you may not have all the solutions, but you have one solution to this non-homogeneous system. Then we look at this set here, all the W such that AW equals B. So what is that? This is all solutions to ax equals b is equal to this set on the right hand side and now what's happening on the right hand side well the right hand side says take any solution to the homogeneous system and add it to the vector p so somehow what's, hap what's happening here is this two solution sets are related and you get one from the other by adding p your specific solution to every solution uh, in of the homogeneous system. And let me just draw us a kind of a picture here so you can kind of see what's happening. So imagine that this green plane here is all solutions to ax equals zero. So this is my homogeneous system. And inside of here is a particular solution, my vector v. Now, P is a particular solution to my non-homogeneous system. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my vector P and I'm going to add to it my vector P. So upstairs I get P plus, uh, P plus V. And this is going to lie on some sort of new plane. Okay, And this new plane is going to be all solutions to ax equals to b, my non-homogeneous system. So what's happening here is all the solutions downstairs, which are solutions to the homogeneous system, if we're going to add p to all of them, so you're basically lifting them all up or lifting them down, depending upon the, some of the coefficients of p and which space you're working at, but you're basically translating the solution sets around. Okay, so that I can write that down. So solution sets are translated, or maybe are, tra are translations of one, of one another. So as a consequence here, what it says is to find all solutions to a non-homogeneous system, one can do the following. One can find a solution to one particular solution to the non-homogeneous system and then add it to all the solutions of your uh, homogeneous system uh, of linear equations. Now, why should this be true? Okay, well, let me quickly explain why this is true. I have my two sets here, B and C. So I'm just using B and C to represent the set on the left-hand side and the set on the right-hand side. Okay, And what we want to do, we want to show that B is equal to C. So logically, what we need to do is we need to show that B is contained in C and C is contained in B. So I'm not sure if you've seen this notation before, but this means that B is a subset of C. So if you sit and think about this for a second, this part here is saying that everything in B belongs to C, and this part here is saying that everything in C belongs to B. So in particular, all of B is contained inside of B. So they all the three, all the, both sets have to be equal to each other. And so our proof is going to be as follows. We take a vector on this side and we show it's on the show it's in this side, and we take a vector on this side and we show it on the other side. So we're going to do one case first. We're going to do the showing that everything on this set belongs into this set. 
So let P plus V be an element of C. Then A P plus V, using our rules of matrix multiplication, we get A P plus A V. Now V has to be a solution to our homogeneous system. So this is equal to the zero vector. And A P, while P was a, a specific solution to the non-homogeneous system, so this is equal to B. So P plus V has to be in the set B because we have A times this vector is equal to B. So P plus V is a solution to the non-homogeneous system of equations. So C is contained in B. Okay. Well, what about the other direction or the other containment? Okay, so let's say I take a vector W on the left-hand side. Okay. Well, this means that A, W has to be equal to B. It's a solution to my non-homogeneous system. And now we're going to use our, uh, one of a mathematician's favorite tricks, which is adding in zero in a nice way. So A, W plus my vector P minus my vector P will still equal P, right? Because I'm just adding in zero. I haven't really changed anything. But now, when I expand out the left-hand side, I can rewrite this as A P plus A times W minus P equaling to B. Right? But A times B P is equal to B, so we have that B plus A W minus the vector P, or A times the vector W minus the vector P is equal to the vector B. So you cancel off both sides, and we have that A W minus P is equal to the vector zero. And carrying on, what we have here is notice that a times this vector is equal to zero. So w minus p is a solution to the homogeneous system. Thus the vector w is, can be written as the vector p plus w minus p and this guy here is equal to a solution to AX equals zero, the homogeneous solution, the system. So the vector W, which is over here, it can be written as P plus some vector. And that other vector is a solution to the homogeneous system. So to summarize, so everything in B is also in C. So B is equal to C. So this gives you a formal proof about why these two, let me get rid of that. This gives you a formal proof for this particular statement. But the takeaway here, and it might be easier to think geometrically, is that homogeneous systems and non-homogeneous systems have a relationship between their solution set. In particular, one is a translation of the other. In the final part, we're going to kind of go back to writing uh, solutions in parametric form and give some more detail on this.